Hello and welcome to Business Class. My name is Shantanu Prakash and today we have a very interesting guest on our show, Anurag Batra. Anurag, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shantanu. Anurag is the uh, chairman and the founder of Exchange for Media as well as of Business World. And I must say that spending 30 minutes with him has been an accelerating experience because he has so much to offer in terms of how he started his work and all his amazing big plans for the future. But what is most interesting about Anurag and he described himself as a serial entrepreneur and an eternal optimist. So Anurag, how do these two things go together? If you're not an optimist in life, you can't be a normal human being also. So I think a serial entrepreneur is not a, you know, sometimes when you make your profiles, you like to believe. But the fact is I've only done two real ventures. One is exchange for media and then is business world. In between, I've done ventures which haven't succeeded. I started a media school. So Rubika Lyakat, who's on ABP, is from our media school. She's the, so, we have, so I've done some other ventures which I haven't done well. So in the sense, you know, you got to be an optimist. If you're not optimistic about your future, the future of people with you, I don't think you can move forward. And life is about moving forward. Uh, like, Hindi picture se gaana hai. Uh, you know, it's, I don't know what movie I've forgotten. You know, it's about moving forward. Basically, as long as you are moving forward, as long as the water is flowing, the water stays clean and it helps everyone. If the water is stagnant, then really the water doesn't help. So human beings have to be optimistic. There's no other way to live. There are only two things that matter is gratitude and optimism. If you have those two, everything else will follow. So Anurag, your story has been a very inspiring story of the way you actually thought of these very disruptive and many innovative ideas. To, you know, what I really want you to talk about is there is something called an entrepreneurial mindset. Okay, so when people are looking at life, looking at opportunities, there is a way to look at it from an entrepreneurial perspective. So tell us a little bit about how you actually became an entrepreneur in the first place. Are you from a business family? You know, Shantanu, it is very fashionable to be able to tell people, oh, I was sitting under a tree and I suddenly got this idea. And for, since the time I was born in the clinic, I had an, you know, when I was two months old. So can I be honest with you? I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I don't come from a business family. I come from a family of academicians. My father studied at Bits Milani, but he chose to be a professor. He was a professor of chemistry. Then he became a head of department. Then he became the principal of a college. My mother was a school teacher. Then he became a headmistress of a school. Then she came to the SCRT in Gurgaon. So I'm really an accidental entrepreneur. I don't come from a business family. And I'll tell you a lot of things are God's wish. They're serendipity. They're accidental. One thing leads to another. So there's no grand plan. At some stage, you tend to put everything together and then you start planning. But, you know, like most people do in India, I did what most people do. I went to an engineering school and then my father wanted me to do an M.Tech, but I wasn't really interested and I was lucky enough to get into MDI. I keep saying I'm from the first batch of MDI. I got in when the quality control was bad. People like me got in. It's so, one of the finest schools in India. Yeah, right in spite now. of people like me. It's, <laughs> yes, in spite of people like me, it's a good school. But jokes apart, you know, I'm. it's about luck. And once you are in the play, God sends you ideas. You meet people, you know, you learn from them. You look at what's happening in the environment. So, you know, one thing leads to another. So there's no, at least when I started, there was no grand plan. And I didn't start to be an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, it happened um, one day, you know, and a friend of mine gave me, you know, in India, three Fs invest, friends, fools, family. <laughs> so one of my friends gave me 63 lakhs uh, to start exchange for media. I'd actually gone to him for advice. Somebody was investing and he said, take it from me. So life is a series of happy coincidences. And then God has a plan for you. See, I'm a Hindu. And I believe in uh, your life being preordained, prarabd, that is already arranged for you. So I think I started exchange for media to build a marketplace, a B2B 
e-commerce marketplace in Ariba or a commerce one for the media industry. And that was uh, the first of its kind yeah. in the country. Yeah, right? in 2001 to start a B2B e-commerce site. Uh, we were ahead of time, we were pioneers. But in media, we were very ahead of time. Because uh, in India, it's a very face-to-face -face relationship based business still, especially in the business to business setting. Uh, so we really tried building for three years a marketplace, but the big boys have their own sales teams. They don't want transparency. They don't want a platform that democratizes. So we couldn't build that. We started a daily newsletter on media advertising, marketing, communication. It became the homepage of everyone. Then we launched the impact, which is a weekly in the advertising space. We launched pitch, the marketing one. Then we launched the real estate magazine. So we became a media company. But if I go back to so Shantanu, at the age of eight, I would read three newspapers, five magazines. Uh, my parents would get all these at home. So I was a very big consumer of content, books. Uh, and in some way, as you know, that the subconscious mind works on God got me into media. So I became a media person. But really, trust me, it's all accidental. Uh, of course, once we were in the business, then we thought of logical yeah. Uh, progression of ideas, you know, other people come and tell you, why don't you do this? Mm -hmm. So it then became a business. And again, I'm not in the media business in exchange for media. I'm in the business of building communities through digital content, through magazine, through events. So I'm not, I'm, I mean, you can call it media, but it's media plus plus, so sure. to say. And then business world again, six years back, one day accidentally, somebody told me it's up for sale. I picked up the phone, we met the person who owned it, and in one day I bought it. Fantastic. So, you know, again, in the last six years, I had a plan for business world. I've only done 20% of what I can, is in my plan. So, point I'm trying to make is that a lot of it is luck, chance, preordained. We don't know that. We make efforts. Uh, you show up when you need to show up. Uh, if you have good intent, God makes things happen. So that's a very unique uh, philosophy or take on life. But if you go back and rewind the clock a little bit, you graduated from MDI. You know, everybody getting out of there gets a fantastic job. And after that, most people, I would say 99% of people, get into this golden cage. Either they're working in an MNC, they have all these wonderful perks and trappings around them, big fancy designation, a beautiful a business card. But something happened in your life. Okay, that's what I want to explore. That made you abandon this and say, now I want to be an entrepreneur, which is a completely different lifestyle from being an employee. Yeah, yeah so that absolutely. Em that employee to entrepreneurship transition, was there one particular thing that triggered it off? See, I'll tell you, I'll be honest. I don't think, I think, I don't. One is candid, I was out of a job when I became an entrepreneur. In the sense that, you know, AMF bowling, it shut down. I used to work with Deep. Deep was my boss. He used to be a customer. I joined HTA. And I started thinking of entrepreneurship then. But I joined HTA, so I forgot. When we joined HTA, me and a batchmate of mine who's a very successful entrepreneur, we said the process of media planning buying is very inefficient. If we could build a marketplace, we could bring transparency. We could bring democratization. We could do business making. So really we thought of it. And then I always believe when you're doing the interview, when I'm in the interview, be full in, all in. So I said to my friend and my partner that I'll go leave the job because the only way, nobody will give you money if you're part-time. And that clarity, I don't know where I got it from. But I always believe when you're into something, you're fully in. And at some stage, it will lead to results. So I jumped in. God sent me a friend who gave me money. So it was not really, I didn't have an entrepreneurial mindset. But I'll tell you, in all my jobs, I was lucky enough to work with fantastic bosses. Uh, two of them are very well known in India and very successful and very fantastic human beings. They don't need that certificate or credit from me. But I must tell you that all my bosses are fantastic. Uh, and I still have very close friends with them. Some I meet very often, some are not that. But I'm very grateful to them for the opportunities that they gave me. And they always were very affectionate to me. They were always very nurturing of me. 
so you know two of the bosses who are very for famous one is anuj anuj puri is now the chairman of nro i have an unusual story you talked of mdi yes uh when i passed out of mdi the placements were good but they weren't like today so i got a job at mastech which is a listed it services company and there were two months or three months before i was joining the job march 9th was our convocation i was joining on 9th june uh so i went out a junior of mine from engineering college introduced me to his brother in law called david fowler who was setting up colliers jardin okay. so i went and met him and uh, he got me few beers i was young and impressionable then i'm young and impressionable now also but i was a little more young and impressionable <laughs> and uh, he offered me a job at colliers jardin and uh, i accepted that i went back home and i told my dad that i'm going to join colliers jardin so my dad asked me what's colliers jardin exactly. i said it's a real estate services company it does consulting it does research it does broking so mere pita ji ne ek broking pakad liya aur hindi mein mujhe bola ki agar tumhe dalali karni to itna padhne likhne ki kya zarurat thi but he allowed me to do what my parents allowed me to do i joined colliers and in colliers because i worked in real estate and then with anuj i met very high net worth individuals mm-hmm. so you learn from your customers you and because i was dealing with you know individuals and entrepreneurs and anuj was very entrepreneurial one he would work very hard second he was very good at communication third there was there is a certain amount of sincerity that anuj has and all that ethos helped uh, deep kalra used to be a customer he was at am am of bowling is the md for india and he was looking for spaces for fcs so i was helping him get that so once he offered me a job i didn't join then he offered me a job again i joined and i did not do well in that job let me say that because i couldn't sell enough mm-hmm. because people weren't buying bowling center because there was equip customs duty on bowling real estate can be put to other uses bowling hadn't picked up as a game i wasn't being able to sell mm-hmm. and then hta happened and that's where amit and me thought of exchange for media and then naval joined amit is my batchman from mdi and that was my junior from engineering and we thought three started exchange for media but what about things like you know the classic notion of entrepreneurship is you have to have a business plan you need to do market research you need to talk to 10 people about your idea you need to do all these kind of all analysis that given. all that all is a given analysis, all right? that is a given so when this opportunity of business world came to you did you think that you know the the world back, has two back two back stories conspired to give this to me or did you say hang on i am going to analyze it i am going to really understand no, no, how no, much no, capital i already so I, i already did that 6 years back i'll tell you so exchange for media is on the business of media because of that i had an opportunity to meet every business media owner in this country every editor any media advertise but i had done thinking all that the business plan i had for 6 years so when it came one it was a natural progression from a business media which we were okay at leaders in every free do uh, parameter in that business by mm-hmm. traffic by revenue by editorial respect by reach by the quality of what we do in 360 degree so it was a natural leg up so i bought it i did not spend am i jokingly say that i am from haryana we don't think before doing so we just do it But that's you a joke you actually 6 years this business plan was in some way it was in my mind incubated in your head. mind it was but then the plan changed mm. in some sense so it then it didn't uh, go exactly the way no, you had imagined you. it in your head so one culture change is a very big thing yeah. it took me while it is a company that existed for 33 years it's anyway a tough business second i now say the power of three If you think you need one rupee of capital, you always need three. You know it as an yeah, entrepreneur. Absolutely. So don't put less capital to do something. I underestimated the culture change and hence the capital requirement. And third is be bold. Hmm. I, you know, when letting go people or hiring people, shutting down that something not working. I think these are things I do better. Hmm. But I'm in the play. We will make business world work. You know, there are views on whether media is doing it. We can do, do it better. but but what i really want to understand is that you know the power of the media today apparently it seems on the face of it that you know we live in a post truth world and so on now if you look at yourself as a human being anurag 
It's about being an optimist, about giving back to people, giving back to society. So do you feel that the business that you are in versus the person you are, there are conflicts at times? No, no. In fact, I would... And if there are, how do you manage... So there are some conflict? dilemmas, but mostly it's a sink. See, honestly, I'm lucky I couldn't have had a better job. Where would I get... I, I know you didn't do me, but I have followed your journey. So I am talking to you. You meet, in, you're still successful and you built a large. I meet people who are starting out was incredibly fantastic. So I think, first to answer your question, we can do a better job in media. <laughs> and in two ways. One is be more honest. Second is be more detailed. And being more detailed will lead to being more honest. Can, can, are we trying? Yes, we are trying. That's a very, very uh, inspiring story. And one last thought before I let you go. So, you know, a lot of young people today, they look at people like you and they feel inspired. But they don't know enough to make the jump to actually realizing their dreams. So when somebody is in school or somebody is in college, what do you think are the good habits they should inculcate? So that when the time is right, in their mind they will know, how to make the switch to becoming an entrepreneur or a founder of their own company? First of all, Shantanu, uh, you have to be a good person. You have to do the basics, right? I sound very old in this, sound very preachy. But look after your parents, look after your family, look up to your teachers, be nice to your you know, classmates, don't bully them, collaborate with them when you're in class 10, 12. Mm. But what matters, today the world is a little different. Your daughter is an entrepreneur, Martin. my daughter is very young, she's trying to be an entrepreneur. So we know that it's about going for maybe for a Thai young entrep mm. business entrepreneur. There's a school entrepreneur uh, network which Pawan Alala runs. You know, there are many, there may be more. So you, when you so were you in know, school, you used to read a lot. So, so reading is, that is a, so reading a lot is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, one is consuming content, videos, all that. But reading gets you to imbibe. And that's scientifically proven that if you read and you write, it it develops your brain, it develops. Second is um, meet people. Uh, meet your father's friends, your mother's friends. Uh, meet people who are a little older than you, two years, you're in class 10, somebody in call 12 who's done well, make them your mentor. And I want to say at the end of the day, you know, initially you may not figure out what you want to do. It may take you a while. None of us, day one, knew what we wanted to do. We kind of felt it. So is it okay to be in a zone where you're a little not sure? 100%. And you just if you're you know, too, keep if, sort of going ahead in If life? you're too sure, you're possibly being cocky. You know, possibly. I mean, then you're God gifted. But it takes a while to know what is your calling, what you're good at. And the more you do something... As they say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yes. And I, I want to say one more thing, and I think young people, is, you know, life is about trade-offs. Either I can party or I can develop a new business project. Either I can read or I can watch more TV. Either I can eat junk food or I can be healthy. So life is about trade-off. Very early, you should learn to make these choices. And I know young people do, whether to go for another party or to do that. So life is about trade-offs. <laughs> so you got to make those trade-offs. Once you start making the trade-offs, you'll figure out over a period of time what works for you and what doesn't. So I think trade-offs are for uh, ordinary normal people because you have stretched time because you can do eight days a week. The normal people can't do. So I'd like to be normal. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, so I'd like to be normal. You know, that's another thing, Shantanu. You know, the simple things in life are important. A conversation, like a good cup of coffee, a good song, can change your mood, can make you feel good. Somebody is nice to you, gives you a compliment. You know, gratitude. I'll tell you the last story. When I was 12 years old, this is 35 years back, my sister was 16 years old. My mother would say, thank God that your ears are okay, eyes are okay. I we used to, me and my sister used to look at each other. Say, Mama, why do you say that? But today we know the power of gratitude. Today we realize what our mom says to us now also and then. That actually gratitude, if you're, I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk to you. I'm grateful to the opportunity of being an entrepreneur. I'm grateful for all my experiences. 
So being grateful is the biggest blessing. Because when you're grateful, you'll be optimistic. When you're optimistic, you'll find a way. Shantanu, you've been a very successful entrepreneur. And there, there was a time I'd pay somebody money to meet you. I'm not, I may say it as a joke, but that's true. Actually, I asked Gopal for a once connecting me to you 12 years, 15 years back. This is Shantanu 1.0. Now there's a Shantanu 2.0. So what is Shantanu's 2.0 vision? So Anurag, I don't think there is a shift from 1.0 to 2.0. It is one from 1 to 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3. And finally you reach to 2.0 and 2.0 is not the end. It's not the limit. I think as human beings, we are constantly evolving. Because the universe and nature, the core nature of the universe is to be dynamic. Beautiful. Isn't it? So anything that happens to our life, firstly, it cannot be predicted what is going to happen. And the second most important thing is that what is in your control is how you react or how you respond to situation. And every minute, every situation is leaving some kind of change inside you. So tomorrow you will not be the same Anurag Batra that you are today. And I think over a period of time in life, you realize how little is in your control and how much is uncertain and dependent on the external environment around you. So if you ask me this question, what is Shantanu 2.0? What is Shantanu 3.0 going to be? My answer to that is going to be, I'm constantly... You're evolving. a work in progress. I'm constantly work in progress. Till I die and leave the physical body, it's going to be a process of continuous evolution. And that is the beauty of life. Then never stop learning, never stop working and continuously aim for the Sky. moon and aim for the sky because you know unless you aim high where are you eventually going to and if, if you be of your entrepreneurial journey of what 25 years yes slightly around that range yeah. what would be your top three learnings or advice i think anurag my first advice in entrepreneurship uh, is going to be is have a dream unless you know what you wish to do could be different from what you are capable of doing. Start with that thought, I want to change the world. I am going to make sure every child in India gets educated. And what is not a dream if it's not big? Right. The first thing is before it inspires others, it should inspire you. And then create a plan to reach there. Now creating the plan is not the dream. Creating the plan is a very brass tax thing. It's about money, it is people, material capital, financing, funding, execution, process. Third thing is, if you are bad at execution, all your dreams will fail. Somebody said, you know, work and success is about 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration. So I said, you said that, but then you have to, you know, work hard to get to Execution failure. is everything. And the third thing is, don't believe that you are God and you can do it. I meet a lot of young entrepreneurs today. Yeah, yeah, very, okay. very yeah, sure of very, they're very, very sure, sure of them. themselves. Yeah, they're, I can do this. I there's so much of I, 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 I everywhere. I don't think it has to be about I, I, I. It has to be exactly the opposite. In some sense, I like your philosophy that you know the universe or God put you in this situation. So feel grateful for that situation and then try to be a catalyst. Today is not about the individual entrepreneur, the 21st century. It is about collaboration. It is about teamwork. And be ready to give. Yeah, you and Alex are collaborating in some way. Exactly. Right now, all three of us are collaborating, collaborating. on this show. Isn't it? So, it is also about that don't think you should grab everything. I think a lot of great opportunities in life go away because people can't agree, for example, on valuation. People can't agree on partnerships. People can't agree how they will share the spoils of a future story, which hasn't happened. In hindsight, it seems like a silly thing to do. So I think forget about that. These things will take care of themselves. Okay. As long as you're doing interesting work, you're living in interesting times, you're learning, you're growing and you're impacting the world. I think that is the most important learning for me. Anurag's life and Anurag's journey is absolutely fascinating and inspirational. I think he's left behind for us today some thoughts which can only be described as revolutionary from the perspective that today we have forgotten so many things in this world. There was a time when values of 
hard work, values of patience, of gratitude, of being good to others are very important thing. But sometime in the world of business and entrepreneurship, we lost focus on those. And we started thinking about valuation, about making money, about EPS, about ROI, about business plans, and being very cutthroat. We were celebrating being cutthroat. But if you look at Anurag's story, he talks about the core ingredient of success. Be good to people. Believe in yourself. Believe in karma. Things are not happening because you are making them happen. I think this is a very, very inspirational take on things. And I think the fact that he is such a successful entrepreneur and he owes it to friends, to family, to connections, to introduction capital, I think this should be very inspirational to a lot of us who are planning to enter this big bad world of business. But the story of Anurag's life is you can be a good person in a big bad world and you can change the world purely through your goodness and your positive thinking. Thank you, Shanti. You're very kind. Thank you, sir.